In this video, we're going to push beyond 4 plus 2 cycloadditions and learn how we can use frontier molecular orbital analysis to predict whether a given cycloaddition is what we'll call allowed, meaning it proceeds at a useful rate, or forbidden, meaning it proceeds at a prohibitively slow rate. To do this analysis, we're going to rely on our understanding of the pi molecular orbitals of conjugated systems, which we looked at, for example, using Hewless in the past. And we'll learn a very simple pattern for predicting whether a given cycloaddition is allowed or forbidden under thermal conditions and photochemical conditions. And in the latter case, one of the molecules is going to be photoexcited to a higher energy state, and this can make forbidden cycloadditions allowed and allowed cycloadditions forbidden. So we'll see how all that works in this video. Let's start with the 4 plus 2 cycloaddition, the diels alder reaction, and think about its frontier orbital analysis. So the cornerstone idea of frontier orbital analysis is that reactions occur when the highest occupied molecular orbital of the nucleophile overlaps with or reacts with the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital of the electrophile. When cyclic electron flow is involved, though, there's not exactly a clear nucleophile or electrophile. As it turns out, it doesn't matter which you choose as the nucleophile or electrophile if you're just looking at something like butadiene reacting with ethylene in a 4 plus 2 cycloaddition, and that's what's shown here on the slide. So first, let's consider the HOMO, the highest occupied molecular orbital of the diene, overlapping with the LUMO, the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital of the dienophile. If we draw these in, we get a shape that looks like this for the HOMO. Notice we have two in-phase p orbitals right here, a node where the single bond is located, and two in-phase p orbitals right there. And now if we draw in the LUMO of ethylene, well, we've got a node in the middle. This is just a pi star orbital, right? And what we see here is that we can get constructive overlap bond formation via constructive overlap on both ends of the two pi systems at the same time. We've got shaded on shaded overlap here, and we've got unshaded on unshaded overlap here. So productive bond formation can happen on both ends at the same time. If we switch the roles and thought about the LUMO of butadiene and the HOMO of ethylene, in fact, we would come to the same conclusion. That analysis is done here. I won't go through it in detail, but I encourage you to pause the video. Make sure you understand why these orbital shapes look the way they do. Go back to Hewless and throw butadiene and ethylene in there to rationalize the shapes of these orbitals. And you'll see that, indeed, via this type of analysis, the reaction of the 4 plus 2 cycloaddition uh, is still allowed to proceed in that we're able to form two sigma bonds simultaneously via constructive overlap on both ends at the same time. Now, I do want to say a word about what happens when the reactants are polarized, because this is very, very typical for Diels-Alder reactions. The general idea here is still HOMO of the nucleophile overlapping with LUMO of the electrophile. So the HOMO of the electron-rich reactant, which is typically the diene, is involved, and the LUMO of the electron-poor reactant, which is typically the dienophile, is involved. So here are examples of the pi molecular orbitals of reactants we looked at in the regio selectivity video. And we can notice, first of all, that constructive overlap on both ends is possible. Now, because of the way I drew the reactants, this gets a little awkward, but this end is capable of overlapping with this end and that end with that end, and notice it's constructive overlap in both cases, unshaded on unshaded, and shaded on shaded. And another thing to notice is the lobe sizes. I pulled these lobe sizes directly from Hewless. You would want to calculate these in a pi molecular orbital calculator like that. We're not going to draw them from scratch because the lobe sizes are not really predictable, but notice the largest lobe is where we have that negative charge in the resonance structure in the regioselectivity video. And the largest lobe here is where we had positive charge in that regioselectivity video when we were pushing electrons and thinking about resonance structures. And so the molecular orbitals actually account for the regioselectivity just like the resonance structures. Another example of resonance and molecular orbital theory going hand in hand. They should come, they should lead us to the same conclusions. And here, they absolutely do. Now, 2 plus 2 cycloaddition 
is a different story. So a 2 plus 2 cycloaddition would involve, for example, two ethylene molecules reacting with each other. And if we try to think about this in terms of the HOMO of one ethylene molecule overlapping with the LUMO of another ethylene molecule, we run into a problem. There is constructive orbital overlap on one end, right here, unshaded on unshaded. But on the other side, we have unshaded on shaded. No bond formation there, right? Because there's no constructive orbital overlap going on there. And so we're not able to form both bonds at the same time in 2 plus 2 cycloaddition. It is what we call forbidden. And you'll sometimes hear the term symmetry forbidden because this analysis is based on the idea that if we want to make a sigma bonding orbital with constructive overlap in here, the uh, and another sigma bonding orbital with constructive overlap on the other side, the pi and pi star orbitals need to have the same symmetry as that arrangement of sigma bonding orbitals in the product. That's not what's happening here. And so this reaction is forbidden by orbital symmetry, as we'd say. But when one of the reactants is photoexcited, things change. So let's think about the pi orbital or the HOMO and the pi star orbital, the LUMO of ethylene, and what happens when we photoexcite this molecule? Well, when it absorbs a photon, one of those electrons in the HOMO is promoted to the LUMO. And now we can actually think of the former LUMO up here as the new or photoexcited HOMO, the HOMO star, as I like to call it, because there is an electron in there, right? So it is occupied. We have made the former LUMO now the HOMO. And you can think about that orbital overlapping with the LUMO of a ground state, unexcited ethylene molecule and the photochemical reaction. And the LUMO of ethylene still looks exactly the same. These two pictures are identical. Pretty sure I just copied and pasted. But now the HOMO star, well, that looks like the LUMO of ethylene, right? This was the LUMO, and nothing's changed except the orbital occupancy, so it still has this appearance. And now notice, we can get constructive orbital overlap on both ends now. So photochemically, under photochemical conditions where we're exciting one of the ethylene molecules, this reaction becomes allowed. So notice that the photochemical excitation kind of acts like a toggle switch. It makes allowed a reaction that is forbidden under thermal conditions, which just means all we can do is, is heat it. We can't excite one of the molecules photochemically. And in fact, it makes allowed reactions like the 4 plus 2 forbidden. So photochemical 4 plus 2 is actually a forbidden reaction. In general, to carry out a frontier molecular orbital analysis for a cycloaddition reaction, we want to examine the HOMO and LUMO of the two pi systems involved in the cycloaddition and ask whether simultaneous constructive overlap on the ends of the HOMO and LUMO is possible or not. If it is possible, the reaction is allowed. If it's not possible, the reaction is forbidden. And our detailed analyses here showed us that the 4 plus 2 is, of course, allowed under thermal conditions. That's the Diels-Alder reaction. But the 2 plus 2 is forbidden. We also saw that photochemical excitation acts like a toggle switch for allowedness, making the 2 plus 2 cycloaddition allowed under photochemical conditions and the 4 plus 2 forbidden. Because of the way pi molecular orbitals for conjugated systems work is we add two carbons or two atoms to a cy the cycloaddition, the allowedness toggles as well. So for example, when we go up to 4 plus 4, well, just like the 2 plus 2, that is forbidden under thermal conditions, but allowed under photochemical conditions. But the 6 plus 4, that's like the Diels-Alder reaction. It's allowed under thermal conditions, but forbidden under photochemical conditions. So the general pattern that emerges here is that if the total number of atoms and electrons involved in the cycloaddition is a 4n plus 2 number, in other words, 2, 6, 10, 14, then the thermal cycloaddition is allowed and the photochemical cycloaddition is forbidden. And the prototypical example of this is 4 plus 2, total of 6, that is a 4n plus 2 number, but also 6 plus 4 and 8 plus 6 are two other examples of this. On the other hand, 
if the total number of atoms and electrons involved is a multiple of four, then the thermal cycloaddition is forbidden and the photochemical is allowed. And the classic example of this is the two plus two, total is four, and that's naturally multiple of four, but also the four plus four. The total there is eight, and that's a multiple of four, and so this is a forbidden cycloaddition under thermal conditions, but allowed under photochemical conditions.